had an opening of failure. We I mean, agreed to, we uh, to quadruple mean, our funding no, uh, agreed, for the organisation this year. We agreed to stick to time. Just go ahead and discuss, Deputy Matthews. And uh, Tanish, uh, I have a number of questions for you with regards to the EU uh, foreign affairs, trade and COVID-19. But before that, I would like to mention the ongoing situation in the United States and the societal implications of racism both at home and abroad. Um, the Green Party stands in solidarity with all those who experience racism and oppression. The horrific killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis brought into light the ugly truth that people of colour know all too well that racism is alive and well in the world in which we live today, not just in America, but here at home in Ireland too. In light of this terrible event and others like it, we must examine our own words and action towards minority communities. We must not accept conditions for those in direct provision or members of the travelling community that are less than those that we would accept for our own families. Everyday casual racism has led to an othering of these communities, a dehumanisation dehuman that leads to violent incidents and in some cases killings, just like that of George Floyd. I want to thank the many groups across this country who have come forward with words of support and education, showing us how best to become allies to migrants and people of colour. It is not enough to pay lip service. Where we see racism, we must call it out. Those who are in a position to affect change must do so. Tanisha, I wish to um, ask a number of questions in relation to the EU and trade matters. Um, yesterday, a briefing from Andreas Schwartz, uh, DG of the EU budget, um, outlined the agreement and direction for that substantial budget, a 540 uh, billion package for pandemic support and 750 billion for crisis repair and recovery. Um, Tanisha, with reference to the, the very urgent liquidity needs of the SME sector throughout Ireland, uh, the shutdown costs that have depleted capital in that sector and the need to support the over one million people employed throughout. To what extent has Ireland availed of the EU pandemic support package and what is proposed to support the SME crisis? Um, it, it needs urgent and decisive action on liquidity and solvency support. And has the government assessed the scale of support needed to reflect the serious issues facing the SME businesses and their employees? Uh, with regards to the 750 billion um, budget, the, the EU recovery plan, next generation EU, has the government undertaken research regarding potential uses of this funding with regards to large scale projects that focus on decarbonising our society, uh, the digital economy, transport, housing, health, um, research and development and energy, uh, which create long term sustainable jobs and offer superior economic characteristics? Before the COVID uh, pandemic, Thonish said the uh, ISIF investment strategy, the um, Ireland Strategic Investment Fund, uh, sought to develop housing, promote climate action and respond to Brexit. Has the pandemic stabil stabilisation and recovery fund compromised the achievement of these goals? And has COVID-19 expenditure had an impact on or depleted Brexit financial supports for business? Uh, Minister to refer to EU legislation, um, a recent EU Commission announcement that they will next year introduce legislation on mandatory human rights and environment due diligence in EU companies' global supply chains. How can it be ensured that Ireland lives up to its obligations in this regard? And in light of the recent discoveries of human rights abuses surrounding global supply chains, an example being the manufacture of PPE equipment, can the Minister confirm that he is committed to exploring ways to ensure that businesses will carry out checks on international supply chains and commit to responsible and sustainable practices? A Minister, while it's not directly related to COVID, it does relate to oppression. And do you agree that China's latest national security legislation threatens the autonomy and freedoms of Hong Kong? Do you condemn this latest move by the Chinese government? Or have you in any way expressed concern to the Chinese authorities about how this legislation will undermine the one country, two systems framework? And will you make a statement on the matter? Thank you, Thanish. Thank, Thank you, Carol. There's a lot of questions there, Minister. Yeah, um, there is a lot of questions there. And, and um, certainly, I, I, um, let me maybe start with the end one first. How much do I, do I have? Five minutes? You have or? a whole five and a half minutes. Five thanks. And a half, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah.